All right, everyone. Hello and welcome. No, you can't have, you can't have that. So, welcome back again. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, I know we moved, so last time we really talked, we were at a different place, so there will have probably a whole new... No, stop, you can't, no. I left my cat, that's what I do. Welcome to my kitchen, everyone. So this, today we are gonna be talking about coffee, and specifically, uh, the pour-over method of coffee brewing. Now, a lot of people get confused with pour-over method, and they don't understand what that is, and how is it different than your drip coffee maker, like your Mr. Coffee. Uh, we'll answer all those questions at some point, but today I really just want to focus on introducing you to what a pour over is and how to, how to make it. So, let's get started. So first, you're going to need a couple things. I think I have them back here. You're going to need two things, well several things. A V60, which is this little cone guy here, little, this is your brewer. You'll need this craft that usually comes with it, so you buy the V60 like kit and it comes with everything you should need in that regard. You will need a scale of some kind. I really like this scale, it's by Hario. The both of actually, all these are by Hario. Um, yeah, they make a really good scale. Um, this will run you about 50 bucks. This is another like 60 or so. You're also gonna need, um, well, obviously a grinder, um, which you guys can see over here on the screen here. And you're gonna need some kind of gooseneck kettle. Now, you don't have to have a gooseneck kettle. You can use, when I say gooseneck, it's, it's this guy right here. Let me, let me show you on the, on the camera. This gooseneck kettle, this, this is why they call it a gooseneck. You have this little kind of goose-like neck. You have other kettles that have this to spout. That will work, but I recommend using this, uh, not this particular method, but a gooseneck kettle, because it gives you the best pour control, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. As far as grinders go, um, this is just an OXO grinder that I got, um, that we actually got <laughs> on our, off our wedding registry, and it works really great. Um, so yeah, any grinder will do, but preferably a bird grinder. Um, but we, we can talk about more about that later on when we get to it. So, we have all of our things. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, you might have some kind of timer if you don't have a scale that has a timer. And a spoon. I'll kind of show you all that in a second. So first, let's talk about um, how to brew this. And then we'll talk about really what it is, how it is, and why it is. So, so first, you need to grab your coffee. Um, I have my coffee right down here. This is uh, glass. This is uh, a lot left in here, but... This is Clash Coffee from a little place uh, local here in San Dimas, uh, California. So, first we want to turn on our, our scale. Can you guys see that all right? Um, no, we're gonna switch out this scale because I think my apologies. Great. Okay. So now we have our scale out, and you guys can see it. We're gonna take our um, coffee and we're gonna measure out um, uh, 60 grams per liter. And when I say 60 grams per liter, I'm gonna brew about 250 mils um, of coffee, which is about one cup of coffee, roughly. And to do that, we're gonna need 15 grams of coffee. So if we talk about 60 grams per liter of coffee, a quarter liter, 250 mils, would be about a quarter of that 60, which is 15. So, I'm tear the scale out here, add our coffee beans, and I'm looking for about 15 or so grams, give or take, depending on how you like it. 15.9, that's good enough for me. Add away, throw this into our grinder there and grind. Now when we talk about uh, grinding coffee for a pour over, we're looking at like a medium grind. So if you have a setting, or this book in particular, I'm look, I grind about a 7. It's been 7 out of 15. So the setting is 1 to 15. We're about in the middle, that's about 7. Great. There we go. So this is about as fine as, as, as it should be. I mean, you can see that right there. About that fine. So once our coffee is grounded, and it, it is important, now I do, there are some people that don't grind their coffee first thing in the morning, they'll have a pre-ground, and that is okay. However, when you do grind your coffee beforehand, you do tend to lose some of uh, those uh, aromatic compounds. So, I recommend grinding uh, when you plan on making your coffee. So, you also need to start to get some water going. You should have done that before, but you know what? Magic of YouTube, just like that, the water is good. So now when we're talking about water uh, temperature, it, it, people say it matters and it, it really depends on your philosophy. Um, I brew at 90 degrees C, some people brew at a different temperature, that's about 194 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Um, moving forward, I, I, I like to use metric system because it just, it's all by tens and it makes it easier to divide things kind of back and forth, so that's just what I use. Okay, so now that our water is done, we brewed that at 90 degrees C, we have our 15 grams of coffee. Now it's time to actually put everything together and go ahead and brew our cup. So I'm gonna grab this. We're gonna come over here. I'm also we're also gonna need a filter. Now these filters, um, 
are just these little uh, triangular ones. Or these guys, flexible 60 coffee filters. You can find these and these will come with whatever kit you end up buying. Okay, so now we have our hot water right here, um, our V60. Hi, cat. Oh, no. Nope. <laughs> uh, V60, our little carafe, which will hold our final product of coffee, our filter, our scale, our, I said our coffee. Um, a spoon. Um, you don't need to have the spoon, but it, uh, I'll show you. It's part of the technique that I use, so I like to have a spoon. And then again, if your um, scale doesn't have a timer, like you'll notice back here. Okay, sorry about that. My cat is freaking out. So now that we have, like I guess, our water, our, our little B60, the carafe scale. Um, oh, I was talking about the scale. So if your scale doesn't have a timer, like this Hario scale right here, you has a timer button right here and a clock right here. You can get a stopwatch, you can use your phone, you can get, you can use another watch. So I have a stopwatch, my watch, whatever you want to use to keep track of time. Um, you want to make sure you keep track of time, this is important. So what we're going to do first is we're going to assemble our V60. So scale, carafe, V60. Super complicated. Now what we're going to do is we'll take um, our um, filter here and we're going to do what's called a mountain fold. And I'll show you this over here so we can get a little bit closer. We're going to want to take this lip right here, you can see this lip, and bend it over and make sure you get a nice even fold. This just helps it stay in place and helps it so when you open it up there's no weird edges. So there's that. So once you've done your mountain fold, you just open this bad boy up, stick it right in there, and you're good to go. And now, this is a really important part. We don't put the coffee in quite yet. What we're gonna do is what, something we call pre-wetting the filter. So you're gonna take your water, and you're gonna take your fingers, kind of hold that down so it stays in place, and you're just gonna put a little bit of water all along the edge of the, your filter. Now what this does is it washes away all that papery uh, taste out of, out of your coffee. If you don't do that, you're liable to have some, that kind of very not great paper taste that you that you tend to get with uh, filter coffee. Um, so this just helps pre-wet the filter. It also helps kind of preheat, pre-warm the uh, carafe here. So when your coffee, hot coffee does reach in here, it doesn't harm the glass or shock your coffee at all. So once that's done, we're gonna take this and we're gonna pour this out in the sink. All right. And now that's been poured out, we're good to go. So we're gonna take our coffee here and we're going to just dump it right into here. This way. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do next is make sure the bed of coffee um, is even. So let me, let me show you. If this is what our bed looks like right now, I guess you can see it's a little uneven, you can kind of take your hand, tap it a bit until you get it nice and even. I don't know if you can tell with that lighting, but nice and even. Once that's done, you have your everything assembled and you're pretty much ready to go. So you to tear, tear your scale to zero, so zero out your scale, because we want to be measuring the amount of water we're putting in. 60 grams of coffee beans for every liter of water we put into this. So like I said, we wanted to brew about 250 mils of, or milliliters of coffee, so we need 15 grams. We want to be able to measure the amount of, of water we put in. So what we're going to want to do, talk to this really quickly, um, we're going to do this in two steps. In first step one, we call the bloom, which is where we just pre kind of wet the top of the, the coffee grounds to get everything kind of nice and saturated, and what that does is extract all of that carbon dioxide that's, that's trapped inside the coffee, let that escapes. When we brew it, we get all the nice juicy uh, acids and oils we're looking for. So what we'll do is I'll have my timer right here, and, I'm, we're, and, we're, gonna, and we're gonna bloom for about 30 seconds. Some people say 30, some people say 45, I like to do 30. So as soon as you pour, start your timer. Take that. Nice and wet. You can, you know, about 80 grams or so of coffee. You take this, you kind of swish it around, make sure you get it all nice and wet. We're going to wait about, like I said, about 30 seconds, 15 seconds or so um, on the clock. There we go, 47 minutes. Great. When that's done, great, we're at 30. We're just going to keep pouring. And when you pour, you kind of want to make sure you're pouring in a circular motion. The goal and the idea behind the pour over is to get all the grounds evenly wet. So we have the ability with our gooseneck kettle to make sure that all edges and all corners of the coffee are, are wet. What you want to avoid is 
pouring directly on the coffee filter wall. And what that does is give you channels, which is never good for anyone. All right. so there's about 250 mils of water. I'll take my spoon, I'll just give it a little stir, a couple clockwise, a couple counterclockwise, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. Take this guy and we'll set it right here. And that's pretty much it. Now we just kind of wait for it to drain. Now this whole process can take anywhere between a minute and a half. Well, that's a pretty fast, but two to two and a half minutes is kind of what you're looking for. But again, it all depends on how much coffee you're brewing, how thick your grind size might be. If you're dealing with something a little thicker, it might uh, go a little faster. If it's a little bit finer, it might go a little slower. So it really just depends on how you're setting it up. But for this brew, we're look, we should be around two minutes. And again, like I said, these Houston kettles are really great because it allows us to kind of get everywhere in there where we need to, which is awesome. All right, there we go, that's about two minutes. And here, here's, here's a good test to see if, you, if you've if you kind of reached a good benchmark for, for uh, brewing with these guys. Number one is the minute mark, two minutes for about 250 mils is what I found works the best for me. Again, that, that varies based on who you are and what you're doing and people have different, different opinions. Um, when you look in the in the carafe with the final filter, you want to again you, you're looking for that very flat even bed. So let me show you over here. Okay, hi there. Sorry, really quick. Future Sam here. Uh, I didn't realize that uh, right after that timer went off, my phone stopped capturing video for whatever reason. So yeah, <laughs> just know that all I was going to show you was just the flat bed on the coffee filter. You kind of want it flat with a little mound. You don't want any kind of deep crevices or anything like that. But uh, yeah, that's it. Back to old me. So now that you're done with that, it's time to try it. So we'll kind of take this to the side here. Um, you want to throw away this, uh, this guy pretty quickly. And now we'll go ahead and pour. So it's a little bit more than what can fit in this kind of cup, but let's go ahead and give this guy a taste. think. No, that is a really good cup of coffee. And of course, while it might be sacrilegious to some and it would break my heart, you could put cream or sugar in this. But uh, with this coffee, with if you get a good roast of coffee, a pour over would be pretty good black. All right, so that's how you brew um, with your pour over uh, V60 setup. Now, we can talk about other coffee brewing methods, and if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to answer any of your questions you guys have regarding coffee. Um, any kind of question you could ask about, about uh, the kind of coffee to use, what grind sets to use, what things to buy. Um, I love talking about coffee, and this is kind of what I do. So please, please feel free to ask any and all questions you want in the comments. If you guys found that this was at all helpful, interesting, entertaining, at any value at all whatsoever, um, go ahead and smash the like button for me. It helps really, really, really well with the use of algorithm and everything. And yeah, what should we uh, do next? Um, we can do mocha pots, we can do more VC, we can do we do Chemexes, we can do a lot of different things. So yeah, let me know guys what you guys would like to see next. And well, until next time, we'll see you.